The social media industry is a cutthroat mistress where feelings and relationships get thrown in the gutter in pursuit of money and fame. It's a natural series of events that get played out across the content game. A classic story of this has been in the display window of the football YouTube world for the last year or so. So why and how have these two podcasts that talk about sweaty men in uniforms caused so much drama? A little over a year ago, content creator True Geordie was cancelled for an attempted joke he said on a live stream. It resulted in him and his business partner Lawrence becoming radioactive to sponsors and made their public image worse through a series of bad apologies and PR cleanup disasters. However, the biggest ripple was felt on their football IP, The Kickoff. The Kickoff was a separate channel which focused purely on football, more specifically Premier League games. It was unlike any other football content on YouTube at the time. It was incredibly high production and had a unique concept of having each panel member a fan of a different Premier League club, offering varied perspectives, despite how shocking some of their takes may be. The show was hosted by True Geordie, Lawrence, Boovy, Hugh Wizzy, Rory Jennings, Adam McCola, and a rotation of other football content creators. So after True Geordie got cancelled by someone who has literally cancelled themselves in Andrew Tate, and all their sponsors got pulled, the podcast began crumbling, with the kickoff members distancing themselves from Geordie. Adam McCola stated, I was friends with Brian before the kickoff, so this whole episode has been a bit confusing for me personally. He has since reached out which I appreciate. I genuinely don't think Brian is a bad person at heart, he's just made a mistake. We all make mistakes at some point. The way it's been handled throughout though has been poor. Ultimately, I've made the decision to step back from my position on the kickoff. One by one, everyone distanced themselves from Geordie, which is fair enough, everyone's gotta look out for themselves. However, the cancellation happened just a few weeks before the World Cup was taking place, leading Geordie to ask Lawrence if he would continue working with him throughout the World Cup. Up. And he said, would you do the World Cup with me? And I wasn't really in a mental space to like, like that's, it was kind of traumatic to go through that. Like mm. you, you know, to be humiliated on a live stream is not, or just in public is not pleasant. And you probably know this, you have days where you're like, I don't want to go live today. And you're probably just having a slightly bad day. Mm. These were like bad days back to back to back. We, ha I had brands who I was meant to do stuff within the World Cup just being like, sorry, mate, you are like radioactive right now. It's like, I just been in the, it's like I just been in the Chernobyl reactor and people were like, yeah, we can't do a brand deal with you right now. So we were losing that. Any deals that we would have had for the World Cup were gone. And obviously then the big brands in like the Gymsharks and those guys also dropped us. And there were nice calls with those people and it was like, well, you know, there's not much else we can do. Mm. After the World Cup, the kickoff returned on the 4th of January 2023 without Lawrence and a brand new panel of guests. Most fans immediately felt like the kickoff was nowhere near what it used to be and with some fans feeling like it was a refreshing spin on the show without a load of shouting. However, a week later on the 18th of January 2023, a month and a half after leaving the kickoff, it was announced that Rory, Adam and Boovy would be launching a brand new podcast podcast titled The Club, which would become part of the fellas studio, which is basically a podcast studio owned by YouTubers Cal Freezy and Chip. The following day after announcing the podcast, they uploaded a video titled Welcome to the Club. It was essentially a trailer detailing what they would be bringing to the show, which to some fans sounded very similar to the kickoff. The club was a hit and gained well over 180,000 subscribers within the first year of launching. And on the 22nd of January 2024, the club podcast released a video in which they quote, brutally rank football podcasts, and naturally, a discussion about their ex employer, The Kickoff, came about. The next up on the list is The Kickoff. Um, the Kickoff obviously was once supreme and the front runner. It genuinely was. It was untouchable. Since then, I think there's been a bit of an equalization. Other podcasts have come along, and The Kickoff doesn't any longer have a total stranglehold on that. There was a time, in fact, you and I did a Champions League final on there, and I remember the concurrent viewers were thrilled. Were the roof. How much yeah. credit would it have in the bank? Like where we we're gonna we we're gonna have to rank it in a minute. Well, I don't watch it. As, I don't watch anymore. Do you watch it now? Um, genuinely? No, because I. I... <sighs> Yeah, I don't, I'm going to, look, everyone's going to slag us off for having kind of opinions no, we, because we we're can, biased. But we're only ultimately, treating it the way that we're treating every other podcast. we're all in the space. We all look at these podcasts and I think, do I look at the kickoff and, and what, want a football opinion from anyone on there with all due respect? And there's a couple on there I do like, don't get me wrong. Do I get football insight from the kickoff? I don't, I don't anymore. Oh, That's me. the industry. And if anyone out there is listening, not in the industry, a lot of them are obviously, about finding people in this industry. It's, it's, a, it's a HR thing. It's about finding people. <laughs> it is a HR thing. It's not about get, getting beautiful cameras. Yeah. It was at the time. That was revolutionary. Then finding people like you and obviously Hugh Wizzy and you, of, of course, and loads of other great fans. But mm. that's hard, man. That's hard to find people of that, of that also, caliber. Also, there's, 
there's a reason I ended up on there, Rory ended up on there, because we had already had voices, right? Yeah. There's a certain skill set. You can all set. do that. I think it's a bit unfair to say that, considering most people who consume football content would argue that they have no idea who Boovy or Rory were before the kickoff. But saying it's hard to find people of quality is hilarious as well, because I don't think there's one football content creator who comes out with solid opinions other than a rare handful. Every content creator just says the most outrageous things possible to get clipped up, so it's cringe in some regards to start putting content in ranking systems or acting like one football discussion is better than another. Other. During the podcast, viewers were left confused after they didn't even mention any of Mark Goldbridge's podcasts, which are some of the biggest on the platform, and because they kind of danced around the discussion of the kickoff and what happened to the true Geordie. One online commenter stated, Honestly guys, I think either address it straight up what happened with the true Geordie, or don't mention it at all. This wink wink, nudge nudge stuff is bizarre and disrespectful. Since his time off from the kickoff, Lawrence has done a wide variety of work, from creating documentaries, launching his own channel, and producing the Chunks and Young Philly podcast. On the 27th of February 2024, Lawrence spoke out publicly for the first time since cutting ties with Brian, appearing on Mark Goldbridge's podcast. What There's always say? two sides to the story. Though. Yeah, and, and I'm sure that all those guys would have a side of their story where they say, you know, I wanted more money or I wanted, you know, I wanted this or I wanted that or I wanted it to be more convenient or whatever it is. And I'm, I'm very open to the idea that, you know, the, the show wasn't like perfectly set up to suit everyone always. But it became very much like an in-group and an out-group very quick. And it's very isolating because my phone is just buzzing all the time. I can't imagine what Brian's phone was like, and I can't imagine what their phones were like. But I'd imagine that each of them had people equally saying, dump this, this is never gonna go back to where it should be. Lawrence also noted in the interview that Geordie and himself probably made a mistake of not giving the other members of the kickoff skin in the business, or is it sometimes referred to as a co-op business, in which members become part owners and have voting rights and key business decisions. Or at least that's what I'm being told on Google. Don't listen to me though, I did a business BTEC, which you can understand probably would have been a good move from every kickoff member's perspective and it's how a lot of YouTuber media companies are beginning to operate. The bigger the company scales, people involved are more incentivized to see its growth. This then led Goldbridge to mention that if he had signed up to be a United fan on the kickoff, it would have been lights out numbers compared to other live streams in the football space. You see, at one point in time, Mark's That's Football live stream and the kickoff had very similar viewership for key Premier League games. So combining forces would have absolutely knocked any other show outside of the mainstream media out of the park. It was frustrating at times because you couldn't get a word in edgeways, especially when you went to a, a plat in, when you had one guest. When you yeah. had two guests, it was easier. But I still enjoyed it. I liked the you liked that space, and I actually do think. And we were talking off camera. I think I don't think it ever could have happened. But I think if you'd signed me up as the United fan, oh, it would have. That, that would, that's lights out for everyone else yeah. in that space. And it, would, and it would have been amazing and it never happened. That was a shame. Yeah. Yeah, the show had its problems like yelling over each other and having incredibly bad takes from time to time. But I honestly believe had the kickoff carried on, it had the potential to really knock on the door and disrupt some of the biggest media companies in the world. Some people may be outraged when I say that, but you have to give props where it's due because no one was bringing that level of production value to the online sports content world outside of major media companies. But that's a lot of if buts and maybes and not how this story unfolded. Mark continued by bringing up a very good point that losing your IP and your friends in the process is just a kick in the balls. On top of that, the club podcast was able to succeed because of the disappearance of the kickoff. And naturally, human behaviour will be to go, you could have dealt with that a bit differently. You could have done that differently. And I, I think that, yeah, that, that's why it's fascinated me for so long. I wanted to talk about it because I just think it's, and obviously you needed to be comfortable to do that. Yeah. You know? And maybe, you know, I'd happily talk to Brian about it, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's a fascinating story. I think and, someone and, should ask him about it. I, yeah. Like, not in the sense where it's like, hold him accountable. Like, I think he's been held accountable. Mm. But like, I think it would be interesting to hear how he felt about that. Well, um, there's, there's people, there's influences, not necessarily in the football space, but there are big influences out there who've said similar things. Let's not say worse or any better. And, you know, they've acknowledged it and they've moved past it very, very quickly. But their social cup was more full mm. or they, there were other things that were going on for them at the time. Sometimes you have the momentum with you. It, 
I think that kind of where it helped the club to an extent because there was someone who went, oh, we'll financially put a little bit behind you for a little while and you can begin, you can make yourselves go pretty quick. The kickoff left a big hole that then they could then fill. Mm. So it would, they, it, you know, you can get yourselves up and running pretty quick. And, you know, again, that's, you know, there business are some the way very po- There are some very popular people out there that, you know, it doesn't take much. We're great in this country at doing it. You know, we do it with footballers, we do it with pop stars. We build somebody up 100%. to cop them down. Mm-hmm. While in social media and business, it's difficult to trust anyone and everyone has to look out for themselves. It is astonishing how quickly people will drop long friendships because of an attempted cancellation or joke. Granted, a very bad joke that is hurtful to the Muslim community, but if you're really day one boys with someone and business partners, surely you confront them and check them on what they said, apologize, educate them, and hopefully move on as better people in the process. But social media doesn't work like that. Everyone involved has to be seen as distancing themselves from the person accused and be seen as a villain until they refill their well of social currency or goodwill. I took nothing. I had to build up from zero. And it's only like 13, 14 months on that Sky went, yeah, that guy should come on. And that tells you everything you need to know. Like, I wasn't touchable for by brands for ages. Different people give you different advice. You know, do you do you batten down the hatches and just get through it? Or do you face it and go, you know, go fully into it and just go, I was wrong. I was ignorant. We shouldn't have made these decisions. I shouldn't have said this thing. You shouldn't have done that. And I'm sorry. Because also when we did that, or when we attempted to do that, most people went, oh, it's just fake. You're doing it because you lost money. And it's like, mm. those two things can simultaneously well, haters be true. Are gonna, haters are going to hate, aren't they? But They're those things flop. influence brands and brand sentiment. And I'd imagine that Gymshark and Pokestars look at those things and go, oh, well, no one wants... Like, do you really want your brand associated with something that's just I always going, you hate foreigners, you hate Muslims, you... I don't think there's any way back with them. You know, to be honest, no. my, my observation on that is that, to be honest, from from brand's point of view, you know, that's going to be a long journey back, isn't it? Because you, you just, you're always going to get beat with that stick and the easiest thing to do is to retract. Especially if you're not clear, in, especially yeah. if it's like a foggy mm. uh, thing. And it, that's what ultimately ended. It was like, I, I, we, there were a lot of other things that were kind of building up and I, Brian and I don't think dealt with it in a very good way. I'm not saying I'm, yeah, I, I don't think I was the only one was responsible for leaving. I don't think Brian would say he was wholly responsible for me leaving. I would have probably liked it to go better, but at the same time, it was hard to know for either of us what to do at that time. And we had to, we had to get through it somehow and we didn't. Lawrence also revealed that he no longer has a relationship with Brian and doesn't see himself working with Brian in the future, as that close to seven year chapter has come to a close. However, when asked if Lawrence thought there was a way he could have dealt with the cancellation and kept the original kickoff going, he stated that a big part of it was not having an exit strategy. Well, it sounds to me there was a way to keep it all together. It was just managing it. I just wonder how much longer it would have gone on in that form, if that yeah. makes sense. And I, and I think to an extent we were running towards the end of what the life cycle of that iteration of it was. Could we have, between the two of us or group of us, strategized something new that then came out the other side of it? Probably impossibly. But with the club coming along, it dots that I drew were like, okay, that the club didn't feel like a, an idea that happened in that moment. It might have been, but it felt like something that had been mulled over and was kind of in the works anyway. Mm. And so that, I think the writing was probably was already- spin off? Yeah. And, and, but that was kind of the point was I, I wouldn't, um, so the only feeling sometimes I have when I look at the club now is I go, God, they're doing a lot of brand deals. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, and like you get pangs of like, geez, I wish I'd got that cash because obviously, you know, the brand deals don't roll in in the same way. And some brands still look at me or look at whatever. And to an extent, they'd still look at what happened with Jack mate and things like that and go, oh, this guy hates this or whatever. And that's a problem because it doesn't reflect now me or whatever. But that's down to, again, like a series of just not dealing with things in that moment and essentially just like slapping the problem back down and where it should be going, let's deal with this. That was the real issue with all of this. It's quite perplexing what you can and can't say on the internet, especially depending on what you label yourself as. Would the true Geordie have received nearly half the amount of backlash if he was labelled as a comedian? I'm not so convinced. But as Lawrence said, they drank from the social well too much, and when they went to look for more, there wasn't any left. As much as it all is a consequence of his own actions, I do feel sorry for Geordie in some respects because other content creators make bad jokes all the time, but aren't held to the same accountability. It's easy to sit back and say they should have done this or they should have done that, but at the end of the day with anything online, it's all of a sod, and you have no idea what's really happening or going on behind the scenes, which is always going to leave fans to speculate. But I think it's also unwise to just simply label the club lads as snakes, because it's business and when stuff happens in real time and your peas get threatened and there's job insecurity, you've got to do what 
you've got to do. Today, the kickoff has found a stabilized format with a new cast and still gets good numbers. But Geordie today still hasn't addressed anything since Rory, Boovy, and Adam left the kickoff. Football content these days is literally about saying the most ridiculous stuff possible in order to get views and create the perfect short form clip from the original podcast. So they're always going to be a bit fickle. But at the end of the day, they will all continue working in the space and spouting shocking football opinions as always. Thank you so much for watching this video and your support on the channel recently. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below what you want to see next.